edition of Human Humane Architecture. We're up here in the uh, academic hills. We're in the East West Center, I'm Pace building. And uh, we are at a conference, at a symposium that's called the Second uh, Germany Hawaii Clean Energy Symposium. And we snapped one of the keynote speakers here who come all the way where I come from, from Germany. And to share with us something that is a pa shared passion with Martin, as Jay, who is here as well, says, Martin, that's what you've been very dreaming about for a while. But now we bring someone in who is a little bit more professional than Martin and has actually perfected that to professionalism. And we're going to talk about what I call cargo courtyard cabanas in, in my way of calling things. And we're basically basing it upon this book here, which I call the Bible of something that you can make a housing out of what we today, tracing back to the Soto Brown who gave the opening keynote speak, he called it an abundant post-contact uh, building material here on the island. And we have uh, Maximilian Sides here and we have Connie Kwan here and they're both uh, emerging experts in making this become reality on our scarcity of resources island here. So we start out with, uh, with Max. Thank you for being here. And tell us your exciting story, how you sort of professionalize the architecture out of shipping containers. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Martin and uh, Connie. Thank you very much for being here. So it's amazing being here. I was just uh, arriving yesterday and it's my first time here. And uh, when I arrived here, I saw all these shipping containers and it, uh, you know, it gave me such a great feeling about being here. And I think we, we, we're doing the right thing. Let's take a step back. What do we do? Who do we are? And what's been driving us for the last couple of years? So to introduce our company, and I'm speaking on behalf of Container Work and, and my business partners is we've been, we are developers, designers, forward thinkers and entrepreneurs. So we, 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 we've been trying to find a solution for the housing market, for the housing market in Europe that's facing the same problems as the used housing market. We've been looking for an innovative, sustainable and, and um, affordable housing solution over the last couple of six, or the last couple of years. So what, what does that mean and you know, like what's been driving the market? Let's take a step back and you know, like when we look at the used housing market, there are major challenges that this housing market is facing right now. Let's just figure out like two or three points. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the issue about sustainability. Sustainability, you know, people ask themselves, isn't there anything out there which is kind of sustainable? They are looking for green and sustainable solutions. And the used housing market and the housing market in general, you know, you build houses as you did 30, 40, 50 years ago. So it's a very antique and classic way. So it's not really sustainable. Second of all, it's, it's all about affordability. Uh, I, I personally live in New York and in New York, you know, people spend 50% of the wages for uh, rent. And you gotta imagine, this is a huge problem. Private debt is at all time high in the United States. This shouldn't be the case, right? And another point I'd like to figure out, and Connie is, you know, part of that um, generation as well. You're a bit old. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> oh. um, it, it is the uh, it's the point that people like uh, um, they have a different desire when it comes to our the generation of millennials. People don't want to want to don't want to own. They want to share. You know, there are all these companies like uh, Oli, Common, Go Quarters out there that offer. Um, shared apartments where you're in there for two, three months and then you move on, you move to another city, you know, it's not about, cr you know, credit worthiness uh, again or like, you know, like it's about being flexible, flexibility. This is what's driving. And the US housing market hasn't been reacting to all of that. So I think we found a solution. So what do we do? We take used shipping containers that have been used for years for transportation. We take them from uh, the harbor and we convert them in a unique way. What does that mean? So my business partners in Germany, they've been working for, this, for the last six years on an automated serial uh, pr uh, uh, process, how to insulate them. So we take the used shipping containers, which is very sustainable. So we take a product that has been used for years. We bring it to, to, the, to our production site, which is right now in uh, Wassenberg in Germany, close to the uh, Dutch border 
and we bring them in there, it's getting into a street, we call it the street, and it's going to be insulated by a machine. The beautiful thing about that process is that the ins insulation is very thin, so the insulation is just four inches thick. So we can convert a single shipping container into a single apartment unit. Most of the competitors have the lack of that serial product, uh, process, so the insulation is very thick, so they have to remove the walls, which you're destroying the product, you're destroying the container, so it's not st stackable anymore, it's not serial, which is very different. So we can use that single container. After the insulation takes place, we are um, putting all the furniture in there. We're talking about beautiful bathrooms, beautiful kitchens, and, uh, and, and the finishes the finish are of, of the most beautiful quality. Very European, very lovely, straight to the point. So when it comes to, we are by doing so, we are solving a problem. In the US, we have a problem of, uh, you know, we, we have a lack of construction workers. You might have a property, and you might have closed on that property, but you cannot find GCs. Nobody's building anything anymore. So we can produce, in the middle of nowhere in Germany, for very remote areas. And we just, you know, we insulate them, we furnish them, we put them on the railroad, and it's getting somewhere in the desert. So which is kind of unique, and this is like how we can fight that housing problem. So we really do like that a lot. Uh, when it comes to the, the, the you, you might be asking yourself, how is that insulation? You know, it's a monolithic insulation. That means the heating comes from the bottom, the cooling comes from the top, so there's no thermal bridge, which is kind of a unique feeling for the guests. We're sitting in that room, it's a bit cold, could be a bit more cozy, you know what I'm saying? You, some of the buildings here in Hawaii, they have these old HVAC systems, so you don't have that. <coughs> Second of all, the sound is is you know you don't hear the neighbors we put a container next to the highway in germany and uh, you don't hear the trucks out there which is kind of very high standard so the insulation makes the quality insane um a single we use 40 feet containers of now we think about using 20 feet in the food uh, future we talk about roughly 300 square feet you could modify them so you have a porch for example right a little terrace you sit outside enjoy a glass of wine you know that's lovely as of now, we, uh, when it comes to the different sizes, we use basically, we either leave a 40 foot container by itself or we combine two. So you double the interior feeling. If you're in the, the big one, you don't even would realize that you're in a, in a shipping container. So we, we do that, basically we do that for the B2B market. So by saying that we don't deliver a single container into your backyard, the beauty about that serial process is that you can deliver 50, 40, 100, but the beauty comes with the mass production. Mm -hmm. What we really do like as well, and we put a lot of effort in offering the most beautiful finishes. So we have bathrooms provided by, you know, a lot of German company, like the German like uh, appliances like Bosch, you know, like that that's in there when it comes to the kitchen. So the quality is very lovely. So I've been, the last couple of weeks, you know, in months, I've been traveling the country and I've been taking a look, for example, at student housing, at dorms. They've been built in the 50s and the 60s, you know. You, you go to one of these Ivy League universities and you, you, you sleep in, in, in a horrible dorm, all right. So we think this should change, you know. We really, really put a lot of effort in there and, you know, I think it looks pretty cool. And if you see the, the pictures out there, you should check it. It really looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that first introduction to your, it seems logic that while, you know, our dear friend Hans Slavik, who's the author of the book, has been a pioneer of all these sort of, um, you know, ones, these entrepreneurs who have started to basically do one-off projects, you know, how to basically convert the shipping container, but you're doing it sort of in within the genetic code of a shipping container because the shipping container in itself is a is a mass produced thing that is automated right everything is brought to uh, perfection as far as efficiency and effectiveness so you're just sort of along these lines right um, we want to share with you a little bit from our side how sympathetic we are but also sort of learning from each other and I should say you know we did a walking tour yesterday through Kakaako you had a great chat with Bob Oda from Kamehameha Schools and in there, so our Kakaako, where your system seems to fit in, we have transit-oriented developments, and you probably go up in the range of what you're doing because you can stack containers up to eight on a ship, and so that's like the max you can go to. 
Um, but we, we're a little bit, as a university, we have a little bit of a different, uh, other extreme sort of pitch because we're, when you talk about, you know, finest finishes and appliances and Germans, we have some people here out on the street who can't even think about having a kitchen at all. So I would like to pass on the microphone now to Connie and explain a little bit what we're working on currently in, in school here in our studio together. So. And, and if we can get slide uh, 23 for that. Thank you, Martin. Um, yeah, so our studio project this fall mostly um, is focused on like low income shipping containers and where it's located in the CTAR Research Center um, in Waimanalo. And what we're basically trying to do is how can you do the most with the least? So using the shipping containers already available in Hawaii, um, we we want to use like the doors and like kind of create like an extra space. So um, using the shipping container doors, and if you like align two of them together, you can create like two spaces in one if you like close up the doors. And with the uh, doors closed, you'll um, on the east and west side. Um, we're thinking about adding like vertical louvers so you'd have like natural ventilation as well. And if we faced all these shipping containers, um, having them south face facing and having like the center part cut out. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Facing north, that cut yeah. out, yeah. Um, Good. Facing north, um, it creates a lovely like outdoor space as well. And um, Having them all south facing, we could add like a green wall and also add like a green roof as well. Since the CTAR um, Research Center, it does a lot of research on like plants. Very good. So that's like the extreme uh, minimal existence sort of version of that. As like, you know, with cars, you could buy a rabbit, you know, in the most, you know, simple sort of, uh, you know, uh, version. And then you can go to a little bit bigger engine and you can go to the GTI which is the fancy and you got the leather seat so you can go so we're basically covering the, the entry level which we have a lot of entry level people here increasingly and I also want to explain on behalf of Bundit my dear esteemed colleague here being the most um, um, ambitious and successful critical practicing architect on the island he's currently working with a school and this is slide number 24 if we can get that up this is his uh, early sort of pre-schematic design for using uh, shipping containers as to improve, um, you know, uh, situations in uh, our educational realm here. And again, I think that the key is what I like about all what we're doing in our different realms that we basically keep the integrity of a shipping container. M many projects try to sort of demise and ignore and neglect and transform them into houses. But I, I like, this combines us as different as we are, but we all believe we're proud of shipping containers, right? Yeah. We're like, we love them. We think yeah. they're great. They're just like large scale building modules, like huge Legos that we can basically in, inhabit, if that's sort of correct to say. And if we can get uh, slide number 25, that is an urban version that we propose, again, as to stack how many as there are on ships. and. This is a version, sort of a tropicized version, where we say instead of maybe um, insulating it from the on, the inside, which basically helps a lot for cold climates, but in warm climates, as we know, what's sufficient is to put a head on. So yeah. if you put a head on, we propose a sunscreen out of uh, reclaimed albicia woods. So there's so many sort of variations to a theme, and I think it's totally exciting to how we can basically inspire each other bounce of ideas, have you come here and share sort of your experience and we share a little bit of ours and then somehow merge. I also want to say that you just got approached by Chief Sock from the Honolulu Fire Department who was extremely excited. They want to build like a training uh, uh, facility and he's saying, well, that's all we would need, right? So there's a exactly. lot of... There's you don't have to be in residential. There's a lot of, there's a lot of potential here, definitely. And we want to have the, the last slide here, number 26, is referring to our every other week co-host, to Soto Brown, who went into his archives and found out that you're building on an island's tradition because the first shipping containers uh, in the United States were uh, shipped in 1956. 
and only two years later, and that was from New York City to Houston, I believe, and two years later, our innovative island picked up on that, and Madsen Containers started uh, with the first shipping in, in the Pacific. So this is, this is an indigenous, we're talking post-contact construction material, so you're, you're, you're sort of right on. Yeah. And so with that, maybe you want to touch on a couple more things to basically phase out, but um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to get the message across, uh, Max? Yeah, when I was like, uh, just to, to um, catch uh, on your point, it's like when I came here and I saw these uh, shipping containers on the way to the university from the airport, I was like, they really fit here, you know, mm -hmm. they really fit to Hawaii. And uh, it makes a lot of sense, you know, to do something probably, hopefully with you guys as well. Um, maybe, you know, we, we come up in, you know, in, uh, we thought about it in the, to come up with a more affordable solution as well. You know, we just probably just provide the insulation mm -hmm. and then you can um, include um, local uh, people here that do the, the finishing out in mm -hmm. the Hawaiian style, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, what we are doing as well as we're doing, we're working on office solutions so it doesn't have to be residential. Um, I just think that this is a lovely, um, a lovely way how to even like come up with very innovative products. We are just finishing um, a hotel in the middle of the jungle in um, Costa Rica. And imagine you're living in the middle of the jungle and you, you're staying in the hotel there, but you have you know a German layout and German finishes. So that's lovely. So we could probably do something here as well. Yeah. 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 Or a German beer garden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if the camera could would turn around, we're in a jungle here right now. Yeah. I mean, that's all the middle of our island is basically a jungle, yeah. which is also a great potential for keeping the containers cool because in a jungle it's always cool, right? So we got the shading already through the vegetation. I think yeah. that's. You want to maybe talk about that specific location, Connie, in, in up in Waimanalo. In Waimanalo. Uh, so Waimanalo is mostly like farmland and. Um, I say about it I think well we did explore that we, we did a field trip there and I, I, I think it's a great location there's Hawaii as you know like gets a lot of sun so what we're thinking of doing is making it completely green using solar panels that probably won't go on the roof since we're thinking about doing the um, little roof garden but um, yeah the climate's great um, and with like the natural ventilation going with our louvers, um, you don't need AC. Hawaii, as you know, like doesn't get cold at all, so we don't have to worry about insulation for our project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's in, in Waimanalo up there, we particularly seeked out a jungle, a little forest they have, and placed the containers in there and have your little cabanas and you're working out in the fields and then you come home and go into your private thing. And again, our pitch is like we, we uh, there are three companies. There's Madsen here, there's Young Brothers, and, and then there's Pasha, to whom we reached out. And, and there are three companies and, and they were saying currently the market price, and we haven't talked about price at all, probably we should. So our thing is like they said, well, we're selling them for 2,500 to three grand. And then we're like saying, well, buy one and get one free. So we're basically saying, you know, as the math is 40 footer times a 320 is indoors. And then you get that extra 320, which Connie explained extra. So you basically get 640 square feet uh, for $2,500, which is, of course, you need to do some, you know, sweat equity interior work, of course. But, but that's basically sort of like the cheapest way you can make it. And you can make it really nice, so yeah. it's 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 along the same lines. Yeah. So uh, I I mean that's a great product you're working on, and I really think it's it's it, it's really got a lot of potential. Um, I think our prices are slightly different, and a bit way higher, but um, still it makes a lot of sense. You know, when it comes to especially when it comes to the financing aspect. You know, you, as being real uh, as being a real estate developer, you know, you mostly have the problem when it comes to like you have so many costs combined to hard and soft cost, right? Hard cost by finding the right construction team, soft cost when it comes to all of the finishes, like getting architects, interior architects. Here it's like choosing what do you want in a car. So we come up with a, with a set of finishes that mm -hmm. you can choose from, which mm -hmm. saves a lot of energy and costs. And banks, you know, we talked to a lot of banks, they like the product because they, for them it would be amazing to lend money to these kind of projects, given the fact you know how the finishes look like, you know the product. So. This is something to consider about as well. With our high end, you know, we look, you know, when it comes to, to 65 to 70,000 uh, $70, dollars 
when it comes to the the fully furnished mm -hmm. with everything included um, product, which is still a f very affordable compared to what's out there. Absolutely not comparable to what you guys are working on. But I think you know, like there is definitely room for, for probably future project together here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and as we said, it's like it starts at the very low end, and then you can easily go up. And yeah. as you said, you can start to do uh, sweat equity, um, and and it's 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 a great yeah. it's a great idea. So um, I know how we're doing on time here, but again, thanks for the encouragement to uh, coming here and point out to us that our sort of weird idea of cargo uh, cabana courtyards. Um, is something that that would be feasible and and that you guys basically brought Hans idea of prototyping uh, to fruition and sort of mass producing that I think and, and automizing that I think that's an that's an awesome it's always been in the air and, and yeah. that's why this was the first book but there are so many more out there and you got a great endorsement by Han which you proudly place on your website where he's basically saying hey this is the right way and I know that Han has been a friend and I, I should say at this end if you guys want to look into that in the old um, urban transcendence show days and I'm looking at Jay that's way back uh, I actually when I was sent out over the summer being my one band show with my little laptop and so technically on the edge but content wise I visited Han at his office and, and we did a show and he was sharing you know his sort of pioneering passion so he is really proud of you guys oh great to have brought to sort of He's perfection and and fruition sort of his his vision so that's that that's amazing and and now all stars align here in the middle you, you just said before nowhere but I corrected to everywhere right we're the center of the universe here in Hawaii and where all things come together and and again, you uh, teach us here what what we need to be taught about the the business of, of that, and uh, hopefully we see many of these uh, popping up here like trees and at different places for different uses for sock for the fire station for Bob Oda up in our Kakaako <laughs> uh, here at UH of course uh, there is uh, urgent need of student housing. We have private developers, unfortunately, building horrible stuff out at the intersection of uh, University and, and King Street. Mm -hmm. This is like how you perfectly described how like we dinosaur we are as building technology. You yeah. know, this is a fully conventionally built port in place, all hermetic, you know, and, and, and super high end and, and just like, you know, shouldn't be there. So yeah. we, we need you guys here. So uh, great. definitely thank you for that. So, um, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Morin. Jay, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I hope to come back very soon. And uh, I hope to stay for a bit longer and that I see the other islands as well, not just containers and, uh, and Waikiki Beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me here. And I guess I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, too. And maybe one, one last thought about, I think this is great, what you say that you keep the mobility of the element because the multi-story ones especially we've always been thinking about there's still some vacant lots like even in Waikiki there's vacant lots where developers or owners of, of, of land are waiting for some reason over another one we could make these like flash mob yeah. projects right mm -hmm. that just pop up you just need a truck and, yeah. a, and a flatbed and a crane and they pop up over the weekend and all of a sudden they're there and then you know enthusiastic people like us and some you know qualified urban nomads that we formerly called homeless gonna move in and gonna make it work and demonstrate and I think it's gonna then sort of give good press so the uh, the owner will benefit from it of the lot you know because yeah. you know it's, it's a good project and when they're ready to build on their lot you know we just move on so yeah. it's a sort of flash mob basically methodology that I think you know you guys with your system allow because the container is still a container it can be on the crane put on the crane because everything is on the inside and, and not on the outside so that's a, that's an incredible potential yeah. as well so let's go cargo and uh, go crazy here on the island yeah all right guys I think we're 
we're at the end of the show, are we or not? I don't know, we're doing on time. Can someone, uh, that's the beauty of live, uh, not in studio, that you don't have all the amenities of clocks and monitors. So this is a little improvised. <laughs> I mean, if we're not at the end of the time, I can, but hopefully, probably, but hopefully. I can add one point uh, that, that's been kind of cool. Um, we've been um, awarded um, by the German government mm -hmm. as being one of the most innovative startups uh, in Germany right now. So the president Steinmeier came and uh, gave us the certificate, which is kind of, yeah, really satisfying, you know, if you're working on something that has a meaning, all right? Um, we've been part of the Green Tech Award, so you're not just doing something to make money. Probably, you know, at one point, and we, we thought about it as well, at one point we can go there and, like, put every 50 container out there for a charity project. Mm -hmm. Or at one point that we can really attack, you know, not probably by 40-foot containers, by low-key versions of 20-foot containers, the homeless issue. Mm -hmm. The issue here, when I'm here, when I was here, you know, driving around, and you know, when I was in, like, I was last week, I was in San Francisco. The whole, I live in New York, same issue. Whole city is flooded with like homeless prop, uh, people, and it's such a huge issue that we have to address at one point. And ab I think absolutely, this is so. The containers would be, in one at one point in the future, um, the right thing to uh, to fight that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And talking about Steinmeier, working with Angela Merkel about. Still. Yeah, still, still, yeah. still. Yeah. and uh, you know, and she has invited the containers because of the immigration wave, right? That's Inviting true. a million people, and they had to be housed first and foremost with with shipping containers. And to my, in my memory, I think there was a shortage at one time because of that. So I don't know. Maybe even you need us here because we have so many, right? Maybe this is a source for you guys because I don't know how availability is has that sort of opened up again that market or I mean I heard it maybe it was just a myth but you're in the midst of it so you tell me how as far as availability of the building material oh, I say the the material so the container per se it's it's there's a big a big surplus of containers in the states uh, the biggest surplus of shipping containers is at the hub of Lo uh, Long Beach mm -hmm. um, all the goods that come from countries like China you know so the goods get out of the containers and there is not the same amount of exports when it comes to countries like the United States to these countries. Might change, who knows, but <laughs> might get a bit more expensive, yeah. But as of now, there is a huge problem. The, the, the refugee problem, the crisis hasn't changed um, or hasn't changed the, the availability of these containers, mm -hmm. um, probably a bit. Um, more than happy to work with Angela Merkel in two years. She got even more time. Probably she's joining us. Um, but uh, who knows? You know, like she said, she doesn't want to be still in, po in politics. So you know, well, we need good people. All right. I think Jay is going to recruit you for another show about that. He yeah. Likes to talk <laughs> about that kind of stuff. What you just explained even applies more to us because we import almost everything, and we unfortunately don't make anything anymore. So that means containers come full, totally packed. And then they go back empty because we don't make anything of significance anymore. And shipping something back over 5,000 miles with diesel ships doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's why we have a lot of re a retirement community of containers here. And as well, the, the shipping companies have told us they're constantly retiring the containers at a certain time. And then they're ready to be repurposed or yeah, upcycled is a term yeah. that's used a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, that's amazing potential once again. So uh, I think uh, we can keep on going for a little bit. Connie, you got to have anything to add about our lower end of the spectrum? Um, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, again, it, it would be interesting almost to find, uh, you know, like our university to make an institute or something like that, right? Like a research institution to really oh, do we should work on that. sort yeah. of uh, the anatomy of shipping containers and really looking almost like Johannes Heger did, did this great thing that he said, well, we got different climate zones and we got different yeah. backgrounds. So let's develop sort of a family. We should, absolutely. And, and a catalog. I got one more point right. on that note. And it's... We will have two showrooms, hopefully, in the uh, uh, and one in New York and one on the West Coast. So you guys should all check it out. Okay. Uh, we will keep you updated, and all your right. students should all come over and check all it right. out. And we will have you back for that. Yeah. And until then, thank you very much for Th your inspiration. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> all right. See you guys next week for another episode of Human Humane Architecture here in our paradise to keep in Honolulu, Hawaii. Bye-bye.